The new system, called Phased Aerial Net, uses a very stable static radar aerial and mirrors to shift the beam almost instantly around the sky. It can track multiple targets in different parts of the sky at the same time. Traditional radar on an American F-14 could cover an area of 145 square degrees with mechanical scanning. The MiG-31's phased aerial net can scan 20,000 square degrees. Most importantly, it covers the area below the aircraft where low-flying cruise missiles, bombers, or ground attack planes would be. The phased aerial net system can spot targets at a distance of 110 miles. At a range of 90 miles, the system can capture, identify, and automatically track up to 10 targets. The four most dangerous targets can be attacked simultaneously with four missiles, all guided by the radar system. air-to-air -air missiles with speeds of up to 2,300 miles an hour gave the MiG lethal power against high or low altitude targets. Compared to the MiG-25, the MiG-31 grew in size to accommodate more weapons, better avionics, and a two-man crew, including a navigator. With all of this new knowledge and technology, by the mid-1970s, the Mikoyan Design Bureau was poised to give the Soviet Union a new aircraft that would finally close the gap between East and West. Most MiG designs and much of the Soviet Air Force's strategy had been defensive. The entire third generation of MiG jets, starting with the MiG-21, had been designed primarily as interceptors against the threat of nuclear bombers. But a new fourth generation of fighter was needed to compete with the American F-15 Eagle and F-16 Flying Falcon. This aircraft would have to perform well in air combat, but also in a ground attack role. Acceleration had to be increased by one and a half times, and payload capability improved twofold. It had to be flexible enough to be deployed from an aircraft carrier and incorporate the latest avionics. An increase of 10% in flying and fighting capability was considered a great success. These advances would require a quantum leap. Bill Yakov and his engineers faced completely new demands in previously uncharted areas of development. To create a flying complex that was better than anything else in the world, all its parts and equipment should also come up to world standard. We should compete with not only the world's best aircraft, but with the best aircraft of the future. Traditionally, aircraft components had always been treated separately. The fuselage housed the cockpit, engines, and avionics. The wings provided lift, and the tail provided horizontal and vertical stability. This time, the Mikoyan team moved towards a fully integrated design where all components contributed to maximum aerodynamic lift and maneuverability. In October 1977, the prototype met with great approval as its flying capabilities were displayed to Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. The resulting fighter was the MiG-29. The integrated design had created minimal frontal drag and maximum space for the plane's major equipment. The body at the front of the aircraft took on the shape of a thick wing profile. 
with the wing extensions beneath the cockpit, improving stability and maneuverability. Design and construction use the latest technology. Many parts were made of composite materials, with carbon fiber the major component. Joints were made from highest purity aluminum, steel, and titanium. Many internal structures were made of honeycomb sections for maximum strength and minimum weight. And the canopy was designed for the widest visibility with minimum drag. No one engine met the design criteria, so a new one was created. Two of these Tomansky engines, each producing 35,000 pounds of thrust, were put into the MiG-29. They gave it a maximum speed of Mach 2.3 and a maximum takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds. With this power, the MiG-29 could carry virtually all of the Soviet's weapons at any speed, altitude, and angle. its operational range exceeded 1,300 miles. Contrary to expectations in the West, the MiG-29's cockpit featured a very conventional control system. sophistication of a fly-by-wire computerized system, the controls were extremely familiar to the vast majority of existing MiG pilots. This aircraft is beyond comparison with any other. It is very easy to fly. Personally, I was retrained to fly it without very much preliminary training at all and without flying in anything very similar. I have experienced no difficulties at all, and it is especially easy to land. I did not experience the difficulties of conversion, which typified the previous types of fighters, such as the MiG-21 and MiG-23. The MiG-29's weapons include up to six air-to-air -air guided missiles and a 30-millimeter cannon with 150 rounds that can fire at a rate of 30 rounds per second. The plane also can carry bombs slung under the wings or air-to-ground rockets. system has three target-seeking radar channels. One can detect targets at a distance of 60 miles. Closer in, at medium range, there is an infrared detector and a laser range finder. And for targets within visual range, there's a sighting device in the pilot's helmet. The three channels interact through a sophisticated computer which controls all of the weapons. The radar sighting system, developed from that in the MiG-31, can pinpoint and track up to 10 targets against both ground and sky, regardless of their course. The MiG-29's longer range system can engage enemy aircraft 30 to 40 miles away and destroy them with radar-guided air-to-air missiles. 